Hello again, listeners and viewers. This is the Kodu Classic FPL podcast. I'm your host, Bruce, and as usual, aka Solomon, my co host, Mr. Chama. Mm-hmm. But, Nakab. long time. Man, you cool, man. It's, it's, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna... Yeah, yeah, gonna, yeah, gonna. Um, you can. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is last since, since the end of last season when we did our yeah. season review. Review. We have yeah, not done anything haven't. FPL. <laughs> uh, I guess but you I... can blame me. Yeah, because there's been a lot of football, man. Like, I've been watching mm-hmm. football. I feel spoiled right now. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting. I'm slowly getting into the FPL rhythm. Uh, yeah, the Euros, um, Copa America, Olympics, man. This is a good year, man, for, for sport, honestly, in my opinion. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's been a lot, right? Yeah, it's been I a cannot, lot. I cannot, I cannot enjoy mm-hmm. the Olympics because it, um, it's so difficult to, for me to, to watch the events, the important events or the events that yeah. I would like to watch. And because it's really late in Japan. I, will, I, I, I Always when I'm up, I just see the news that, oh, this thing has happened or that thing has happened. So I've not really enjoyed the Olympics, but... Uh, it was similar for the Euros as well. Maybe the Copa America, at least I was I was able to watch yeah, it because it was, the timing. Yeah, it was later. Yeah. yeah, the time was better. Yeah, 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 yeah that so was strange. a better time for me. Yeah, and you know, busy with Gambia football stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, it has been a great summer for for me good, as well. Good you things know, are see, happening. Yeah, in Gambia. Good things are happening. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, this is uh, game week one preview. So we just combine the preseason or whatever, just put it into one. You know, because we haven't been yeah. like I haven't been really involved in the FPL this season so far. So this might we, be my... we don't say you we, 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 yeah. are, we are we are we are in the same boat. So it's uh, gonna be yeah. a very rough FP, FPL FPL season but hopefully hope, you know hope, hope, we, hope, we can hope. we can find our way along the <laughs> definitely um okay so this is the gaming one preview. We'll talk about a few things. You know, we're mm-hmm. not gonna co- cover everything because there are a lot of channels out there that do the in-depth stuff, the stats, and you know, we're just gonna keep it freestyle. You know, uh, yeah, just just brainstorm through some of the some of the the, the things that we are we are we are thinking about. Um, first things first, mm-hmm. we have uh, some changes. In FPL, I think mm-hmm. they always trying to keep things interesting. You know, they have some some new chips. Uh, I still haven't gotten deep into it. I guess you know, the, you can you're allowed to have like five, up to five free, free transfers instead of the the two, right? Mm-hmm. Have you heard about that? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I've heard about, about it. it. Um, uh, yeah. Like, it is interesting. It is interesting for managers to be able to keep um as five. much as five you know five free five mm-hmm. transfer but it's very rare in the game for even somebody to pick keep a couple yeah. because usually you keep a couple and then you make you do a, a mini wild card like this but how many times do you do that during the course of the season it's not a lot so the five is is, is enticing because if, if you get to up to five transfers in your in your bag that's like and then you have transfer, to use it yeah. It's, it's yeah it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to do but i don't see it happening very often because in, in the game like one week happen like look at the, uh, we're gonna talk about players later look at the number of players 5.5 million you know or 6.5 million there is a t- ton of players there somebody will break out there and uh, people will jump and uh, we all we, we all we all get into that that mood if some players we see that oh this player is the is, is a kind of a breakout player going up then we we, we tend to do the transfer and and at the start of the season you don't know really you don't really know who is who is that player I think that is the beauty of the game. We all try to try to get the best ones possible, but obviously some players will call, will catch us off guard, and we we want to react to get those those players into our team. So I cannot see managers just keeping transfer unless you forget about transfers. So maybe this is also good for those who tend to forget their okay. transfer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For those those, those type of players. but but for in-game managers, I don't see it making a, a big difference. What is your thing? What is your thought on that? I think I think three would have been the sweet spot. You know what I mean? Three. Mm-hmm like free transfers because sometimes you get two you know uh you just want you have to use it because sometimes it goes to two you have to use the going a transfer or whatever or just use yeah. one just in case you do, because you don't want to burn the transfer so i think the three would have been the best you know three transfers and then you know you lose five a bit too much i think because it's a bit too much right things I've, like I, mm-hmm. five game mix a lot can happen in five game mix you can't you yeah just keep Exa- exactly 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 <laughs> it's, it's too long no, I feel somebody was just out there, you know, um, uh, 
it's because trying to make things interesting trying to make interesting for for, for <laughs> thinking it is going to be interesting but i don't i don't see it as as that much yeah. interesting but that, that is not the only changes to the game though um, there's there another are, one yeah there are other few more changes yeah well, what's the other one i think i heard about a mystery transfer it's not been announced yeah, I, yet, I, right I, I i i hate it to be honest personally um i know yeah, about it know. um but mm -hmm. but i really don't like it uh the mystery transfer like Chip, i want to yeah, go it's into this yeah. it's a chip that they will introduce <clears throat> midway in the season that is going to be sometime mm -hmm. in uh in january they will introduce what the chip is you will know what the chip is you know mm -hmm. so for me, I want to go into the season usually because I'm somebody, you know, I, I want to plan things, you know, everything I, I want to do, I want to plan it ahead and, and things like that. Not like I want to plan everything all the way to game with 38, but at least I get an idea when, you know, last season or a couple of seasons ago, we will have the captain team metric sticker where we have already labeled the players we want to captain all the way through the season. So planning is very important for me. So it's to play the game with, yeah. with something that you don't know about, um, uh, it is a mystery, like... For me, it does not just it just does not um, add up for me personally. Uh, for example, like somebody is doing really well, and that mystery chip come happens to come in in January, and then you know somebody happens to like uh, get a huge benefit of that, and then you tend to beat somebody who has been doing a lot of planning just because of the mystery chip. You close that gap, so like it just does not add up for me to have something that is a mystery to, to FPL managers. The game is about planning. The game is about, you know, um, yeah, it's not about uh, <laughs> mysteries or so, something like that. But so yeah, it is you what feel it like is. it's going to it's going to give other managers like an unfair advantage. Like, if, like, they yeah, meet, can, like for example, managers that have been mm -hmm. planning that have been really in tune with mm -hmm. FPL and all of a sudden somebody who hasn't been missing all their deadlines or whatever and next thing you know they just mm -hmm. get the mystery chip and then you know they catch the mystery up chip boost, yeah <laughs> they, it kind of a boost them yeah but that that means another question though what do you think the mystery chip is going to be like what kind of chip would they bring that's going to be so interesting that's going to change the whole game i don't think there's a lot what, what would it be well, possibly um if you play other fantasy games for example champions league we used to play that uh a few times you know there is this uh ultimate euros uh there, there is this ultimate transfer where you can you you, you don't have to worry about the price the price of a player you can get uh, like you can get all the premium players in a team that is one mm -hmm. one, one, one type of thing that yeah. They, yeah. yeah or you know you can captain uh your, your, your for example in a particular game week uh, if you play your mystery chip it can be the captain the the most highest scoring player in your team gets your captain regardless of who you give the captain to that could be another type of That's way they could play yeah. they could do it. and we remember there used to be all out attack which was not a very interesting chip maybe they will bring that back as the mystery chip but i'm sure if it is a mystery chip it should be something new something that they are creating um uh, yeah and maybe they don't even know what the mystery chip is that's why they are with <laughs> you on the to tell us about the mystery chip <laughs> that's possible <laughs> That's possible. Um, jumping to the FDR, uh, fixture difficulty. These fixtures have been announced a long time ago. I haven't yeah. even looked at it much. I guess just was focusing on, you know, which teams have the the, the best, you know, uh, fixtures for now. Because we all know thing, teams are going to change. Nobody knows. Yeah. Every season is different. Definitely there's going to be yeah. some few changes between game week one to game week four. So let's, yeah. let's have a look and then see, like, which teams we feel like... Um, might benefit or have the best fixtures for now. Mm -hmm. So the first thing was Fulham. Yeah. Uh, they have the best fixture. But even though the fixture doesn't seem too green, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a difficult start. Yeah. Cool. Maybe we can explain with force. Uh, I think it's the first four games here. Mm -hmm. We have the fixture difficulty rating for the first four matches in the game week. According to Fantasy Football Hubs, they are tool. They are... They are, they are fixture difficulty ranking. Like you say, you don't see a lot of greens on 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 on, on Fula, yeah, with Fulham, but this is how fixture difficulty ranking, fixture difficulties work. I I believe um, it's not always everything is green, but mm -hmm. if you combine everything together, the bad and the good fixtures for the first four ga games, um, and maybe their coloring system is also different from the FDR and the maybe. Uh, so it kind of takes away something. So they use different <laughs> different style, uh, yeah. but. Yeah, yeah, I think if you look at their fixtures, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly the color coding. If you look at their fixtures, uh, you will see Leicester 
and if we there are teams coming up from pro promotion so maybe fulham is one of the few teams to have two promoted teams coming to in the first four fixtures and then they are playing leicester at home leicester we know they are having struggles you know they're having a difficult time right now losing players losing managers if which we, a, we don't know what they what they're gonna bring in the premier league home or away and then uh, west ham at home is not the worst fixture but if you play at home usually it's a good fixture right and then you have man united away which is the most difficult fixture they have but mm -hmm. likewise every other team have one difficult fixture during the first four game weeks right at least one yeah mm -hmm. definitely okay um yeah uh, so this is one way of planning for me especially the fixture number one but we yeah. all know like i was saying before there's a lot of football so basically, yeah. all these top teams that you see, like the Liverpools, uh, the Man Cities, the Arsenal's, were involved in the Euros or the Copa America. And these players mm -hmm. actually have returned late. And most of them, yeah. probably a few of them, uh, have had like two weeks. Most of them just have like a week, like Bruno and mm -hmm. them. They just came last week. But then they played in the, um, what do you call it, the, the, the Community Shield. But not most mm -hmm. of them are fit. And you have these other players that have been playing in preseason for all these other teams yeah. so that's my that's my biggest worry right now for the planning that's why i'm saying that i'm not looking past game week one to three maybe even game week four max you know because Maximum. things are going to change some of these some of these um players they, they won't be risky to come in and just play game week one some of them might but they if they play they either, either try to manage their minutes mm -hmm. you know to ease into them to get their fitness graduate up because they had extended holidays they, they went to holidays yeah. and they came back later they're not as fit as the players that we are on preseason anyways so yeah. how do we manage this and how do we plan our team around mm -hmm. returning players that are like premium players or let's say like the the, the, the talisman in their teams like the mm -hmm. what is it called um what do we have in my the Watkins I have it in my team? Yeah, the talisman. Draft, which yeah. I'll talk about later. So, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's the risk, like uh um what's his name again? Uh Palmer. Okay. Last season's Wonder Boy, you know. <laughs> is he gonna be involved in the first game week? Second, mm -hmm. does he play full minutes? Yeah, full. You know, there's a lot of questions to be answered, to honestly. I think at this point yeah. it's mostly guessing. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in my opinion, it's a bit confusing. What yeah. what impact do you think that's gonna have? Oh, yeah, that, I think that, that, that I think that fixtures, yeah, yeah. I think I think that is that is that is, that is going to have an impact, and, and it actually you know played a huge part in me collect, select, selecting my team as well. Yeah. Um, I'm happy that you know two of the <laughs> two of the two of the biggest premiums we have in the game, uh, which is Salah and 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 and. and and Haaland, they were free during the summer. Um, mm -hmm. They had the full rest. They had a proper preseason, both of them. So that kind of played a, a, a part why I think, you know, um, you know, I was Haaland less last season, but this season he's in my thoughts. So um, I'm happy that people are thinking, is it Haaland or, or Salah or is it Bode or is it... So, it both, yeah. yeah, it's going to have an impact. But those players, like you say, the Fordins, the, the, the Palmers of this world, the Watkins of this world, you know, um, it's going to be difficult to, to know what to do with those players. Sometimes you just, you know, you just have to close your eye and then go with them, one or two of them. Um, but it's going to be, it's, it's going to play a huge part. And speaking of the, the, the fixture difficulty, uh, um, I think, like you say, I'm going to also focus on the first three, four game weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, I think this is, this has been my identity for the past few seasons. Yeah, you, you, you um, but have been. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I've not yeah. really followed it uh, in the past couple of, se last season, I would say. Last season, I just came and then it become a rogue person, become myself and doing <laughs> crazy <laughs> stuff, you know. You uh, but this is, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to play. Uh, I have a little challenge this season too. I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm disappointed that you do not even have a, a, a on your, on, on the, what is it, the agenda. You don't have a, a, a slot for young woman, the first guy I have yet to play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we should have had something and then have a chat I, on, on I him. Should have, I should have, I forgot, <laughs> you should have reminded me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should have reminded you, but I, when I was looking at it, I, but we will talk about it because we're going to talk about the breakout players of the season. So definitely, we can spend That's a lot of time, a bit of time talking about, about We're going to be talking about Yanko Vemite the whole season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. As the, I think we are the only Gambia podcast, Gambian oh, doing yeah. podcast. So it's definitely, we have to talk about. It. We have to talk about. It. I actually even talked to, told him, "Do you play fantasy? If you play fantasy, you should join the Koto Classic League." Really. I told him that. You know, I will never leave. I will never forget our fantasy stuff behind. I told him. <laughs> so oh, yeah, man. Fulham. Yeah, but if you look at the fixtures, Fulham, Liverpool, Newcastle, Manchester City. So 
you look at Liverpool. Uh, I know you. you uh, I'm, I'm not going to try to convince you about the the Salas of this world, but the fixtures are really good for the first first few game weeks. So that's why for me, if we do my Liverpool bias, of course I will I will I will delve in Newcastle. Isaac, he did not go to the Euros, so he's of course he's, he's in everybody's sharp. lips. He's so that's why he's in, exactly he's looking sharp. Manchester City, Haaland did not go for the Euros. So then I look at Arsenal, are the next team in the but Arsenal they were exceptional last season and they are doing really well in preseason. Saka, everyone is back right now. So okay. it's, it's it's interesting one. Chelsea for me they are mixed back. They are mixed back. If you look at them, look at and their fixtures are not great yep. in the initial season. Preseason state. haven't been good. Yeah, has not been really good. Yeah, Man United. Um, they have a very good start. The first two games, I think, I like it. Even the first four, it's not bad. Bad first four fixtures. Maybe the Liverpool one will be difficult one, but we don't know what what to expect in that in in that fixture. But Fulham, Brighton, and uh, Southampton. Brighton have been very good in precision. I watch them live, but defensively they have not been there. So mm -hmm. for to get a Man United attacking player, I think it's good going to be uh it's, it's, it could be a good thing. And Man United look sharp in the Community Shield. To be honest, they lose the game, but you, you they look. You think, really, you think? You think? You think they look sharp? You think we, yeah, players like Ra players like Rashford. He did not score, but I like what he was getting he the position sharp. he was Honestly, getting he in. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. looked sharp. So that's what I mean. Bruno Fernandez he scored an exceptional goal, which was chopped off by VAR. You mm -hmm. know, uh, Garacho came on, and then all of a sudden you see what he was bringing to that team as well. You know, so the play there are players, there are many attacking players who are looking sharp and uh, in, in in that community shield. So yeah, the fixtures it works out for team for for premium players. I would say who. Had a very good rest this summer, so that's mm -hmm. why if you wanna do Sunday. very well, yeah, Sunday if you wanna do yeah. really well, yeah, you wanna start the season very well. I think you should take advantage of those kind of players. players to be honest, yeah. yeah, definitely. I think that that I think you hit the nail on the head when it when it when it comes to that because uh, yeah, it's a bit it's a mixed bag for me. I was I was watching the Euros and I'm sure that oh how is gonna, how is this, is this gonna translate to, to mm -hmm. FPL? You know, that's like are they gonna come late? But then I'm happy that Saka is back. But that gives us so many options in this year in, in midfield. <laughs> so many. Mm -hmm. But then, like, the Palmer, who was last season, what, what his price, now he's now 10.5. You know, it's good for the game that every um, year you have these breakout stars. They go to mm -hmm. the next season. Their price goes up. Okay, people abandon them or they will stick with them, whatever the case may be. But then each and every season, you're going to keep on having those new players that are, like, Breaking their mold, increasing their price the next the next season. So I'm happy about this. I'm I'm haven't been keeping tabs on the new what do you call it? Uh, like the signings, mm -hmm. but my own team, you know. But uh, mm -hmm. when the when the when the game kicks off Friday, we we'll, we'll start seeing those those players. Yeah, but some interesting signings are actually you know. So Solanke, we are talking about it. Of we are like yeah. we, we chat about Solanke a little bit. Now he's a sports <clears throat> player. Um, sports they don't have a bad style if you see Leicester, Everton, and Solanke is likely to play. I heard what the coach said, yeah, that's what the coach and, said, yeah, 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 yeah. So he's likely to play, so you know, people will be start thinking about him very well. And, um, yeah, he's like Arsenal, their kid, uh, Smith Rowe, he moved to Fulham, and uh, you know, he he's was being, a very yeah, good player for Arsenal running, when he actually. was starting, so he has already hit the ground running at, 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 at Fulham, yeah, and yeah, other teams too are making some, 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 some very good signing, like, um, uh, even the Crystal Palace, they make a couple of very good signings. It's my Lazar, he was a very good player Sad in the back, F yeah, FPL, he's and he's back with them. Everton signed the other one, um, uh, what's his name, Njai. He played for Sheffield United last season before they came to the Premier League. He was one of the best players in the Championship. And um, just prior to the start of FPL season last year, he was talked about like as in, oh, Sar, Sar. No, it's my, no, Njai, Ilma Njai, Ilma Njai, Senegal is player. Ilma, I heard but yeah, but Ilma then he left to go to Marseille, which did not go as planned. But now he's back in the Premier League and his price has kind of gone in a very you know nice price it's is in just, the five yeah, in the five point five range as well. So there is a lot of interesting players, a lot of cheap options, but also there is a lot of expensive options. <laughs> That's the yeah. problem, man. I like last season because the cheap options were the one that kind of um, outplayed the, the premiums. You, like we mm -hmm. didn't have many premiums, maybe just Salah, maybe even even ha Haaland, even Salah wasn't really that like ridiculously high like in previous seasons you know what i mean mm -hmm. like you had all these powers all these new players like mm -hmm. gordon and them were like doing the business isaac you know yeah. watkins <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I i hope that we'll have the similar season this year where we don't really have to worry about owning all the premiums or all the premiums which can fit in your team because i kind of yeah. feel like it makes the game boring 
You know what I mean? Okay, let me see how many premiums I can fit or let me see how I can plan for these premiums and when I'm going to have them into my team. Even though it's part of the planning, it's, it's nice. But yeah. I like discovering new players where everybody moves and the next thing you know, another player has already hit the ground running and everybody moves to the other player. So the timing of how to get those those um, like those like gems in at the perfect time is, is what makes it interesting for me, actually. So Definitely, yeah. I agree. I'm hoping for this, this season to see how things, things pan out. Um, yeah. Breakout players. This is the time to 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 be waxy lyrical about uh, uh, Yanko Wemite. <laughs> the, the, the what do you make of him? Yeah. By the way, what do you make of him? What do you make of him? Before I, I start, have, because we have already talked about him in <laughs> tons. Ad nauseum, I'm sure. Yeah. To be honest, I haven't really watched him play like a full game. I think the only mm-hmm. time I saw him play was when uh, during the Afcon. Yeah. When Gambia, Gambia was playing, I've seen bits and pieces of his preseason for Brighton, uh, yeah. but I know he's a good player. One, and I'm seeing other FPL content creators talk about him. Like, oh, I mean, they, I think they kind of give their three best players to look out for. So I'm keeping yeah. an eye on the Minte, Bob, and another player. I forgot another player. Yeah, Rogers, Abdila. Rogers. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I have no no doubt he's gonna hit the ground and touch wood. I just hope that he stays injury free. But he's not that type of player that gets injuries. You know? So mm-hmm. he stays fit. Next thing you know, his pass is gonna go, <laughs> gonna go quick. So I, I, he's in my team right now. I think that's the challenge for this this season. Do we have him in our team as as long as possible <laughs> and mm-hmm. keep the Gambian uh, flag flag high? So yeah. what's the run now? Since you are very familiar, you met him. You know, you chatted. You had a chat with him. You know, you interviewed him, <laughs> guys. So guys, please, if you're watching this. If you want to know more about me, just go to the Jolla Football Wandaba. You can see his interview there, 100%. So give us the rundown on Minte. What do we expect? You know, how is Brighton going to utilize him? And why should we have him in our team as a, as a like, mm-hmm. a, a Palmer pick, basically? <laughs> as a Palmer pick. Yeah, my fantasy name, we, we forget to talk about that. It's Palmer Minte. <laughs> He's going to be in my team for the, for the whole season. This is, that is, that is, that is my, uh, that is my, yeah, that's my, my last season. No Haaland pick. That is my, no Haaland, this yeah. season challenge. It's going to be like, Minte all the way. Minte pick. Yeah, Minte all, Minte the, pick. Way. Uh, all the way. Yeah, to be honest, um, it's, 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 it is, uh, it is a great feeling, a great feeling for just to see a Gambian player. Um, step. He's not the first Gambian player to play in the Premier League. Uh, Modu Baro played for Swansea, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but he, when, he, when he was young, yeah. Uh, even Bob, they are talking about he's, uh, Oscar Bob. He's he's a, he's a half Gambian. His dad is Gambian, so he, uh, he he could have played for Gambia. Yeah, yeah definitely. They invited yeah, him yeah. to play for. Yeah, yeah, he's wow. a Gambian, okay. <laughs> but he he has already represented. He has already represented Norway. Yeah, he has already rep- represented Norway at international he's good, level. Man. He is very inter- impressive player. Mm, mm, yeah, he's 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 really good. Yeah, he, there are many Gambian players in the Premier League. He's not the only, he's not the only one, right? Uh, you know about Joe Gomez, of course. His dad is Gambian yeah, as yeah. well. Liverpool. You know, um, uh, at at Brentford today is Yanka Zanka. I know you used to hear that name, Zanka. Oh, Zanka is Gambian. Zanka is Gambian. You, you, you know. And um, and, and who, 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 who am I missing? Who am I missing? There, there must be another one. A popular one that was playing a few seasons back. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Masid like... also had another. Masid also have another one. Mohamed Suso. He he left for on loan to Mohamed Suso. Suso. He left on loan to Peterborough in the in the in League One. In the, in the, he played in the Champions League last season for Manchester City. So yeah, there are some, some some good talented Gambian or at least Gambian descents in the in the in the Premier League. But Yago yeah. Mide is the first uh, established Gambian international to play in the Premier League. Modu Baro, when he was playing in the Premier League. He was a Swede, half Swedish, half Gambian. At that time, he could have represented Sweden. He already represented Sweden at youth level at that mm-hmm. time. And then he came to the Premier League from his move to Sweden. But then after, you know, he eventually became a full Gambian international. And then after, you know, he moved up. And he never spent a lot of time in the Premier League. He never established himself in the Premier League. So Minde is coming as an established player. He is not coming as, a, as another addition. I know that's what people were thinking when he was moving to Brighton. Yesterday, I spoke to his agent yeah, in, the, in the interview. So Check he out the even mentioned, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, you guys should take out the interview. We spoke to the agent. He has been working with Minde since he was a baby. So so he know the boy since uh, he was little one. So yeah. So that, that that's what, that, that, yeah. I have to chuck, chuck that one in there. So <laughs> what he said yesterday was Minde is going to 
like they are but i think they are signing him as a uh, as a key player they are not just signing him as somebody to come and uh replace uh players Develop over here. Something, yeah. Developer or something like that he's he's gonna be a main starter in that team i don't know why fbl managers because maybe they don't know him and they, they don't they don't know uh, but uh, he's gonna be a star he's gonna be a star player oh, he's gonna be a key player for for brighton let me just let me not jump the jump the jump the <laughs> the card or what yeah and what people do expect from yanko minte uh as a player um when he moved to to to, to fire not the first thing i say on newcastle the way i say was expect a lot of dribbling and uh you know a lot of hard work from him <laughs> i don't know if if the hard work and the dribbling will translate into fpl points or what but mm -hmm. that is something you you will have to expect from him first of all he takes on people he will be one of the best dribblers in the premier league or he's be one of the top dribblers in the premier league he will be one of the best uh, attacking defenders you know the criminal type of players in the premier league because these are the things that he has quite these are the qualities that he has that why brought him by, by him but he has started the preseason in exceptional form i watched his first two preseason games here fortunately for me he scored in both both both, both of he scored in both games and he was exceptional did some interview with brighton fans they are so excited about him. he's the like he's the most expensive brighton player ever so wow. That, that that is the that is the fact he is the, he is the most yes. expensive brighton player ever as a club brighton he is the most expensive so and of course gambia as well he's the most expensive gambian export mm -hmm. in, in to, to europe so don't expect him to to to, to be a, a a bench or something like that if you are going to go for him expect him to be a starting player and yeah his numbers speaks for themselves last season his underlying numbers were absolutely insane yeah if you look at his you know uh xg he was up there one of the best his touches in the opposition box he was number one in the in the dutch era dvc and then you look at his expected assists you know which are important things for fpl he was also up there so yeah he's gonna his underlying numbers show that he, he will be a good fpl pick and I, at his price point i think he's gonna be exceptional <laughs> he's going I, I when i see money say oh i might mean they could be a a punt <laughs> I, I always comment on those kind of comments and say, no, he's not going to be a pawn. He's going to be a bargain in the game. And this is what I believe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I I guess, Brighton, man, like they, they've always had every season players that we, like we get value from throughout the mm -hmm. season. Last season, I think they, they kind of uh, were unlucky in a way that they had a lot of injuries, right? Ferguson, mm -hmm. Mitoma, uh, 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 so many players march yeah for like, uh, yeah i don't i guess hope that they around, are all injured yeah Jao Pedro, they, most of them did you see the goal he scored did you see the goal he scored i heard people talking about it <laughs> and everybody it's was insane. rushing to go <laughs> get him in it's insane team. <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> mental like I, I was watching the game i watched the, i watched the game then uh mito will pass him the ball he was outside the 18 yard box and then he take the touch with his uh, right foot, I think. And then the ball moved to, uh, you know, set up for his left foot, left foot shot. And then, you know, Minte was running. You know, right now I'm so biased. When I'm watching, I'm only watching. What, you should pass, pass the ball to Minte. You know, pass the ball to Minte. He's making the run. But then he unleashed this shot. Top corner with his left foot. Like, I was like, wow. <laughs> if you see that, <laughs> it's absolutely good. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, and then he could be a very exciting player this season. Jao Pedro as well. 5.5, same price as Minte. What happened to Ferguson too? Like, they, they had, like, so... Was, is Ferguson injured? He's injured, yeah. Again. But we're back to have a very good preseason, your boy. We're back. I, I see I him had, doing had, the Minte actually, celebration actually, and all yes, that. Yes, I saw it today. <laughs> <laughs> so today, man, I'm excited to watch Minte, man. I, I, I can't wait for people to start talking about him. I want to also watch him, watch him play more because I haven't seen him yeah. as much. Mm -hmm. But like, I think last season you talk, you spoke about like how hardworking he was, and you guys, you were hoping that his coach is Anna Stott was his coach last Anna season. Right? Yeah, yeah, you were hoping that yeah. he will come to Liverpool and bring him. I, I uh, made a video. I actually, I actually made a content on that. I created yeah. a content to say why Liverpool should say uh, Yago and Minte. <laughs> and then they, uh, actually, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I will go on Twitter sometimes. Just somebody post something that I don't like, then I will, you know, I will just comment up on on it. I had this with one of very like uh, big Liverpool journalists, uh, or not a Liverpool analyst. Uh, he did the Liverpool podcast with the FPL Wire. It was one of the best podcasts oh, I watched this season about Liverpool and stuff like that with, with Late Riser. Late Riser, every season he invite him. Just his name is Just. Uh, when it comes to analysis, he's up there. I I think I can see him going far. Yeah, 
he did a post when Liverpool were linked with Minte. He did a post about Minte actually, and then saying, uh, "Okay, how, then you can see Minte how good his data was or stuff like that." I just he just uh, prepared that data. Then Liverpool were being linked with the player, and he was really loving loving that that, that transfer. I told him I have been telling you about this player because I watch their <laughs> their podcast every single time when they were talking about who's gonna replace Salah. I told you this: the replacement is there, Yanko Minte. You are not hearing too much about him because he's from a country that people are not. He's no, Popular yeah, for football, popular. that's why. But this guy, if we live will get him, he can be the salary replacement. And I, uh, you know, the, yeah, the go problem ahead. is going to be the problem is going to be he's in Brighton now. We all know he's going to move to a bigger club if all goes well. Mm-hmm. He's not going to go for cheap, man. No, so, not the, so the, the gamble, the gamble that Brighton took, I don't even think Newcastle, I don't know why they even sold him. No, it's yeah, PSR, PSR, they had to sell. They do not want to sell. You guys, just know, go to the I comment know. section and read the comments from Newcastle fans. This is the most exciting thing. I watched the Newcastle game actually in Japan. You know, they came to Japan to play preseason friendly too. I, I watched that. Mm-hmm. I went to watch it. I wanted to do a vlog to ask them what is what is your take on Yanko Mbembe. But unfortunately, that day I was not feeling the vlog. I was not in the. Uh, I I kind of arrived late and all those kind of things. But just go to Twitter, type. <laughs> Yeah, Yanko and then read the Newcastle fans comment. You will have a wonderful day. <laughs> I do those things sometimes. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure they are pissed off. But yeah, you, this, they this, are really this, pissed. Are, these are gems that you know that you saw they're on the verge of becoming mm. like really explode onto the scene. And you know, I'm just, mm-hmm. it's it's Brighton's luck, I guess, because he's not gonna yeah. go for anything less than like the eighties, you know, if if all goes well. And Brighton did not need to sign him, you know. <coughs> Brighton did not need because they have a lot of players in that position. Look at yeah, they have they players do. like Bono Note. They have uh, Adingra. Right now, Adingra is not even playing. Second half, he's coming for five, ten minutes. Adingra was the best player in the African Cup of Nations, the young best young player in the African yeah, Cup of Nations. Yeah. But because a, but because they got this kid, and then all of a sudden now, yeah, you know, I think of course he he will compete with Mitoma as well. It's difficult for him to, but he right can play left or right or in any mm-hmm. position, or, you know. But since they got Minte, I think that I, you know, I think they're gonna let him go. If I talk, when I talk to my Brighton fan who I went to watch the Brighton game with, he's a lifelong mm-hmm. Brighton fan. Um, even the Minte side, I stu- I, I, I asked him why will, will, will Brighton sign this this kid when you have all these players in this position? Mm-hmm. You have the NCSOs, you have the Bona Notes, you have the Soli mm-hmm. March is mm-hmm. coming back, you know, you have Mitoma, you have Adingra, but still. You want to sign Yanko Minte, and then like it was not a necessary signing for them. Mm-hmm. It was an opportunity that, that arise, yeah. and then they mm-hmm. took they, they took the opportunity. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, hopefully all goes well, man. And he just you know catches fire. <laughs> so, um, Highland, this is my my uh, my grab with FPL this season. Mm-hmm. Alan's price. We all know what he's capable of, obviously, after the first season. Last season wasn't too great. You know, he had injuries. Uh, he wasn't, he didn't like replicate the form of his first season. Mm-hmm. But then they still increased the price. Like, do you think that is fair? Or what are you, okay, let me just put it this way. What are your thoughts on the whole Haaland price increase? The, the ex- most expensive player in FPL ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically. I love it. <laughs> What? Okay, explain, explain. Uh, make it make it make it well, make, sense, make sense. Okay, uh, I love it in the sense that uh, it makes people to think. Like, if Haaland is ten million, if Haaland is twelve million, everybody get Haaland, right? And then this game should not be about that. It should be about making decisions, making making like calculated decisions, and then you know getting the better of others by making your decisions better. So if the decision is made too easy for people, I think that is not good. So making Haaland like that price last season. He started his price with 14 million. What was the percentage? Haaland was around 90% ownership mm-hmm. at some point last season. Yes, he did not live up to the price tag. And I don't even think he will live up to the price tag over the course of the season. Like for the whole season, he will not live up to the 15 million price tag. He, I, don't, I cannot see him breaking the, the FPL point scoring record. It did not happen last season. It did not happen the previous season where he scored a record number of goals. I don't see that happening this season. So if that is the way you justify a price, then I don't think he's going to justify the price. But FPL is about it's played in bits and pieces. That is how I see it. Huh? You're talking about blocks. We are talking about fixture ticker. We're saying, oh, we are thinking about the first four game weeks. So we are playing in the block of four. And then next four, next three, next... Four. So you are looking at the block. What block can you get Haaland? And what block can you not... Can, 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 can't you get him? For me, when I see this, Manchester City, one of the best four fixtures in the first four game weeks, the fact that I'm not playing my craziest game like I played last season, yes, I know... 15 million is very expensive for him. But in that block, 
Haaland, maybe because especially the second game week, you are talking about Ipswich at home. You cannot see any like if you don't get no. Captain Haaland in that particular game week, like regardless of what his price is, you have to get him. And then that's why, even I'm thinking, okay, Chelsea. I don't want him for the first game week against Chelsea. I, I can do without him for the first game week against Chelsea. Yes, he did score a hard trick against them in the preseason. But in the Premier League, away to Chelsea, for me, the way I think, I, don't, I will never captain him for that particular game week, for example. So then why should I have him for 15 years? But because of the second game week, is so good that I need him for that game week. He is the only one I want to captain in that particular game week. Then I have to, you know, think. think. So the pricing... Is good because it makes people to think right now what is his ownership percentage right now if you check at his if you can check that what is his ownership percentage you can just check on your on your on your on, 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 on. it's almost it's 40 45 percent or let's say almost 50 percent right yeah 45 45 percent so you see 15 million it is worth for for 50 percent almost 50 percent of the game 15 mm -hmm. million it, it it is okay for them so this is the decision and <laughs> fpl is, should be about this it should not be about it's okay gonna, make the easy i think it's gonna get thing. higher too yeah Mm -hmm. For me, the, the problem I'm gonna have that's that's that is why I'm saying that I want the mid price players to have breakout season like last season, maybe even better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's yeah. FPL is changing to a point because when Haaland came in, like we, have, we haven't seen that in a while where somebody just comes and starts scoring goals for fun, even if you don't have him, like you're actually running a big risk of like having a major uh, rank drop. So mm -hmm. We are, I want us to go to back to, to that's what last season the, the lesson I learned from last season is that like you don't have to be scared of a player like you said mm. get him in the, the blocks where you need to get him and if you don't need him in your team don't be scared to take him out mm -hmm. for me this is in which is uh, I, got, I think I got serious now this is one of my 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 targets for this <laughs> this season particularly no yeah. player is undroppable apart from me <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> Like yeah, join the boat. Thank you. Course, <laughs> if I don't need Haaland in my team, he's going to go out. But then the problem I'm going to have is it's going to require planning. If you're going to uh -huh. have him out, make sure you have enough money in the bank for when you want to bring him back in. Because it's going to be a big issue to take out 15 million. Because you're going to be tempted to spread that money around to get to upgrade some of your premium, your, your, your mid price uh, players to, to premiums. And that's where the trap is going to be. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So uh, yeah, uh, but like you said, I think you 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 you're right in saying that you know it's 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 good. It's gonna get people thinking. You just gonna go oh Halan in all the way. You don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where like last season, just for my captain, just put him there. You yeah, whatever you, you know you get you get because everybody's basically most people are captaining him anyways. There's no thinking mm -hmm. about it. But now things are gonna change, and I'm hoping that people start you know being more brave. Myself included. You know, that is what I teach. That is what that is what I taught myself <laughs> last season by going without him the whole season. Yeah. That is, I think that was my biggest takeaway from conquer your fear. because to conquer your fear. Yeah, it, yeah, I conquer. Like I'm okay. I'm not gonna have him. I'm because he's not good. He's not a good decision yeah. for me this week. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I hope that will help me this season and make so. the right decision. Yeah, I, yeah. Hope so. I hope the same thing to learn from your from your you know from your 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 takeaways last season. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. next thing. What are your picks, or who are your picks for breakout players of the season? Apart from Minte, obviously. <laughs> you have to put it in there. Of course, I was going to say. <laughs> I'm even jealous, you know, he is doing really well in preseason. I keep telling people, he should yeah, keep then, this one. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're only this season. Yeah. Don't let people talk about you before the season starts. Because FPL yeah, people are like eyes. moves, right? Yeah. Like, just yeah, hear yeah, something. Tough, and then everybody yeah. will be... On. Mm. If you hear a little talk about Minte now, I'm like, Whoa! These people, where did they know this, this kid? So I'm kind of jealous in that way because I wanted to own him by myself, enjoy him. Mm -hmm. But he's still only 1% ownership. So it's okay. That's, that, 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 that's okay. I, I'm sure it will go up. Around 1%. Yeah. 1.2? That's interesting. 1.2, yeah. You see? Okay. It will go up. So I'm happy with that. Because of, you know, there's a lot of midfield options, like you see. There's a lot of yeah. mid-range midfield options. So mm -hmm. it's making people like, should we go with the cheaper one? Should we go with the... And then you, Oscar Bob is there too. So people are thinking, Oscar Bob, oh, he just yeah. assisted against Manchester United. Yeah. So I like yeah. that. Yeah. So, but to it, for me, um, in terms of like <clears throat> breakout in the way that they have not done well really in FPL or like, like who can, like, if, if that's the case, I think... Like a player that you know is going to hit the heights of like the Gordons and the Palmers of last season, or at least get close to it. You know, some 
Yeah, like Pamo was a big, yeah. was a big breakout last Pamo season. Was, whew, and then yeah, and then like even Gordon, people didn't realize the first half he was up there. You know, yeah, okay. If I if okay, I I think I have one. I think I have one. I've been watching, and I've been listening. A lot of people talk about Newcastle. Mm-hmm. Newcastle, right? And uh, their defender, he's currently in my draft. That is Hall, who they signed from Chelsea last season. He was on loan. Ooh, and I would an option to buy. Yeah. yeah, Lewis Hall. And this season they bought him. So and they paid a lot of money for him around thirty mm, about thirty around thirty million. Since this preseason, he has been starting almost every single game for them. You know. Uh, I know Bon has been a very great servant or very good servant for Newcastle, especially good deputy in that left back position. But um uh, if you wanna, you know, uh, evolve as a team, you don't wanna have a Bon as a fullback. And uh I think that evolution with with Hall is going to happen this season. He's going to have that spot his as his own, at least to start the season with. This is the belief of Newcastle fans who watch their follow their club. And I, when I watch him play here, Hall, I was quite even though they lost the game against Yokohama. Um, mm. he, I see things. He's bumping forward. You know, he can create. He's he like can create James. things. Yeah, in a way, I kind of he reminds me of Rich James. I don't know why. Maybe yeah, he, the, uh, yeah, he's he's an attacking fullback. He's he's not gonna stay back. Attack. He's not gonna stay back. So he's one of them. And I see, uh, Baco too. I'm very impressed with him. Baco. I'm sorry, everybody is talking about him. Four million. Uh, Baco. Okay. I watch him play, and he's also on set pieces and all whatnot at Brighton. Even yesterday, their game or day before yesterday, their game. He was the one taking the set pieces, uh, playing left back. And he's very attacking too as well. I watch them train and all those kind of things. So I'm very impressed with what I see from Baco. So Baco and Hall, these two defenders, I see them having a breakout uh, season in the in the FPL. Yeah. What what's your what's your thought? I don't have many men. Um, I just know about my team. I know Ahmad. If all mm-hmm. goes well, meaning he gets game time. Yeah. He's going to be somebody that people should keep. But you have to factor that in. Do you think he's gonna get the game time that he? he because we can't actually. Yeah, we we dress for there. The problem is, as much as I like my coach, he's very biased. Mm-hmm. But this new deal that he has, I'm sure it came with a lot of, um, like I'm saying, uh, uh, stipulations. Yeah. He's he's in the hot seat basically. If you don't perform, you're leaving. So he's gonna have to choose whether he wants to die with his favorites, which is the Rashfords, obviously, and mm-hmm. some other players, or he's gonna have to play the people that actually really like need to play. Ahmad yeah. is one of them because number one, I heard that he has one year left on his contract. So basically, if he doesn't play, he's not gonna sign an extension. And he's gonna go for free. The new ownership we have, they're not gonna allow that to happen. I'm 100% sure of it because somebody as talented as, as him shouldn't be going anywhere for free at all. You know, he likes the club. He actually he loves the club, and then he wants to play for Manu. But then the coach is the problem. But he's been playing this preseason, and he's been our best player this preseason. Mm-hmm. So like, there's no other chance for him not to play. Ganache is coming back from um, uh, uh, Copa America, even though he didn't play in the Copa America, right? Anthony is way down the pecking order, anyways. I don't think Anthony is going to. Yeah, Anthony said we expect goals from him this season, though. Yeah, uh, he can say whatever he wants to say. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to believe him. <laughs> it's fine. We can all talk. It's okay. So, and if he gets a chance and he proves himself, fine. You play. That's what I want from a team. There has to be competition. Nobody has to be there feeling like you have, you deserve a place in the team. No. Mm-hmm. If you are, if I was, if I was the coach, I would actually. Because we have about four four wingers now, plus St. Job's five. You know, oh. if you're getting somebody else, right? Rashford, that's Rashford's place on the left is Ganache's best position. Mm-hmm. Let them try and, and and see who's better, you know. And then the right, you have Ahmad and Anthony, right? That's fine. So, but I, I feel like the coach is going to keep Rashford left and then have Ahmad and and and, and, and Ganache fight for the right position. So, so okay. Uh, okay, now, but you identify him as a, as a breakout player, right? Would you yes. recommend somebody to pick him in the FPL team? Because if you, because we are talking FPL, not not not, not United. I'm 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 a, I'm a bit biased in a way that that's something. If the coach does the right thing and plays him, no, but I'm but will you will you pick it? That, that does that I'm mean the bias means you will pick you pick him in your team? Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, how, what is this price? What, what, let me see what is it. I was, I was just, going, just going to check that. What is this price? This price is. Give me one second. Five million. Five point five. He's also in that range, I believe. So yeah, he's the, he's what he's he's five five million. Not bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if somebody is playing, especially with the fixtures that we have right now. Yeah. Come on. Man. Oh yeah, this is it's a, it's it's a shoe win. But but okay, now you have other five point five five million players doing really well. Uh Bob, uh Rogers at Aston Villa. We didn't even mention him. He did have a very decent end to the season last season. He joined from Middlesbrough uh in January and then he had a very good end to the season. But this season is looking like a, gonna be a, a a step up for him. Go take the next step in his and he's a very very good player. So will you pick Ahmad ahead of Bob and uh, and 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 Rogers, depends, for example. Depends on depends on fixtures because we have to have one or two uh uh um what do you call it, for us, bench for us. And you when you look at the bench for us because five million is next to the bench for us, but because of the way things are with midfielders, I'm sure most people's fixtures are gonna be uh uh well not fixtures, uh, um what do you call it, formations are gonna be three five two because there's just too mm. many midfielders right now. Yeah, so yeah, depending on the fixtures, if I see that he's gonna be playing, getting a lot of game time, because he's He's a brilliant player. I'm gonna pick him in my team. Him and Oscar, Oscar, Oscar Bob might be the two that I, you know, being in my team as like the breakouts. So let's not. Um, yeah, I will throw ahead. in one, just one name there before you go. Mm -hmm. um, he's also making a move. Uh, I think I mentioned Simitro, but the other one, Cavalio. Uh, oh, he's moving. You Fabio, Fabio. Yeah, he's going to Brentford, and I, I'm sure he's gonna play the midfield ten role there. He's a five million midfielder. That's what I was confirm confirming on the on the game. Yeah, he's a five million midfielder. Brentford are paying a lot of money for him. They are paying around twenty seven million for him. He has a very good preseason. He scored against Arsenal. Scored against Man United scored against last us, season. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, last season in the second half of the season, he was at uh, Hall City because he spent the first half of the season on loan at Leipzig, but it did not work out for him at Leipzig. Then he moved to Hull City. He was the top scorer for Hull City in the second half of the season. I think he scored almost 10 goals in the championship in the second half of the season. He was playing as a false number nine. So if he's to play the second the, the, the second striker for for Mbemo and, let's say, Tony, uh, because they sometimes play 3-5-2 with a 10, uh, floating 10, like when Ericsson was there, you know, that is what that was what he was that was what he was doing. So he could be another interesting player, a break breakout player. I think five million for him in the game uh, is something I would just chuck in. Yeah, let's go. Nice. Um, so what quickly? What are your season expectations? Um, you have a, a rank that you wanna beat or? Yeah, you know, before this season you started. Wanna see through? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I you know I, I've watched uh, and read. You know, when I did well in FPL, uh, you know, when I went to Fantasy Football Scout talking to uh, Joe, you know, that time I was very much into the game. So my, my thoughts were very much into it. So I have to go back and watch that and then try to, you know, build myself to be in that mindset again, that kind of mindset again. Uh, so I watched that, read the article, uh, like when I finished the season, that particular season, I also wrote a tweet or a, a, a thread on Twitter about my season what i did wrong and what i did right and all those kind of things what should i improve so yeah this season i'm ex i want to go back to to doing very well and i'm gonna uh i'm not gonna do it as 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 how can i say as as like uh, as i did before with the excel and all those kind of things i'm not gonna do it that way but the the thoughts or the mindset is gonna be in that way i'm gonna you know try to do what i think is right for example i have I don't have a captaincy message to I'm not, I'm not going to make that again, but I have an idea in the first four game weeks. Okay, these are the three best it's captains. Be, so yeah. I'm trying to track those players come like I did it before and also set myself a target. Okay, this is the amount of points that I want to have, just like the captaincy points, just like the, you know, the other type of points, the hits and all those kind of things. So I'm, and I'm also want to have a very good, very good start of, to the season. That's why the team I pick, if you look at it, you know, he, this guy is only thinking about the first few game weeks and uh, that is how I'm approaching the game. If it works out to have a very good start, then you know i can build from it and then see when the op window op opens for me to wildcard i'm not scared to work out very early i'm not scared to work out very late in the game so yeah i just want to have a very good start and then i want to have a very good season again how you know that is my that is that is my target and then do it like i did it before hopefully i can have the blueprint and then follow follow that <laughs> again 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can get there because the, 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 your philosophy and the way that you approach the game has been the same. I think it's been consistent. It's just adding a few things. Okay, last season, I don't want to, I want to beat that Haaland uh, fair factor, you know. Yeah. You did that. So next, it's like you're bringing in more tools to this season. So mm-hmm. it's, it's good that you're doing the retros- retrospective and checking to see what worked and what you're doing, but that's good. Mm-hmm. For me, to be honest, mm-hmm. I didn't even think about what my expectations <laughs> would be <laughs> going into this season. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think the only thing that actually stands out is I always want to improve as a, as a manager. What are the lessons mm-hmm. I learned from last season? How am I going to improve or add them to this season and be better, be a better manager? Mm-hmm. Some of these things like you would think that, oh, I'm not thinking about it. But when you get to that decision making, it's when it all comes back. Okay, you know what? Last season I did this. This didn't work out. Sometimes when I make so many decisions, you tell me, oh, you're learning. It's because I actually apply them when I get to the point where I need to apply them. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So it actually makes sense. So this is what I'm, the first thing I'm trying to do is I'm going to be ditching my, or let me just look at a four, three, four, five, six game, uh, one, to, one to six and see how it was the best team. No. I'm going to do from one to three because I have this idea that some of these players that I actually have in mind to be in my team for long are not are coming back late. Therefore, they're not going to have the impact or they're going to hit their their form or their peak at the time where I want, want them to hit it. So I'm going to have to just get the best team from one to three, play that wildcard early, simple. I'm just going to adopt yours, but in a, in a more conservative approach, if that makes sense. And I obviously beat my highest score in FPL. I'm not going to put any <laughs> rank in mind this you time should, around. You should, you should top 5,000, man. Top 5,000. You have but to be the top 5K. I want to do the best that I can. Yeah, so that's, that's, my, that's my goal. Yeah. And then I, I want to add a little thing. I was just watching Black Box because this week I have been in FPL mode. I'm watching a lot of FPL podcasts. I was watching Black Box. Mark was talking about uh, Jota. Of course, uh, like you say, the Jota pick, your Jota pick, that is your own. Uh, you have been t- talking about him for a while. So what Mark said was, as was said, okay, Jota is a risk. We all know Jota is a risk, right? He yes, is injury prone. Um, and then the competition in that position is very strong. There is Darwin, there is Gakpo, there is Diaz. And then they are all vying for those two spots in the Liverpool attack. So yes, those are all those risks there. But... You look at the Liverpool fixtures, he say, and then you we all think in short term, right? If you are thinking short term, why should you think about the risk that Jota usually have over the course of the season? Yep. You just have yep. to think about the short term. He is going to start the first game of the season for Liverpool because the, uh, Darwin is not ready. Gakpo is just coming back. Yesterday, they did not even play in the first frame that Liverpool played. They played in the in the second one. So Jota has been having a very good this, uh, preseason. He, and he's a, he's a bully when it comes to these small teams. He is flat. Like they used to call it flat track bully or something. Like bully, yeah. When he plays against this one team, he scores against them. So when Jota is available, and then he's playing out of position. Again, you add that to, to that. He's a midfielder in the game. He's an attacker. So when you are thinking, like you say, why are we thinking about six games? Why are we thinking about this player? What the problems are? But because you are thinking short term, and also you can make transfer. If so, like Jota gets injured tomorrow, yeah, for you example, get else. Yeah. you just take him out and get somebody else. That's why you have transfers. So mm-hmm. yes, these things are a problem, but these are players that. You know, these are opportunities in the game. So when these opportunities are arise, yeah, 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 exactly. You have to take them. Mm-hmm. To be honest, he's, I like him as a player. That's why I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a very, I'm very biased towards him because I know when I watch Liverpool play, you have good players, but not all of your players can finish. Mm-hmm. Jota doesn't hesitate. He's, he's a, like he's a natural. Yeah, he's instincts like he's good and he's a very good finisher. The only the problem with Jota, yeah. like you said, is his injuries. I am sure if he was injury free. Uh, most of those players he's vying for those positions are not going to stand in his way. He's going to be the first pick, 100%. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, so yeah. Um, last but not least, let us. I know we have a lot of drafts. This is the first time in my FPL <laughs> career, <laughs> career <laughs> that I've had only like <laughs> since the game was 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 released, just uh-huh. less than five drafts. Right. Se- seriously, I'm so proud yeah. of myself this time around. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Even less than that, probably like three. Yeah, I, I don't think I have screen. I don't have. I don't have draft screenshots this season like I used to do. So yeah, like we, are we are growing. We are growing. Because I just put in my mind that things are going to change. Why not just wait till closer to the game, where you know mm-hmm. you have more information, and then you can like you know 
pick your team and then start changing things gradually from there because you're gonna make less changes as the game big deadline is approaching you know because mm -hmm. there's a lot of information out there the people are still signing players we are expected to sign two players tomorrow so how's that going to change your team a lot of changes mm -hmm. so, yeah um let me just start with mine my team the latest yeah. team pickford i don't know why i went with pickford for some reason i think everything i did good defensively maybe that's why five i have million. My team. yeah so five million starting keeper i think last season he was the highest scoring yeah, yeah i think that's why they, they, they yeah. increase his price yeah that's good um yeah. uh, defense i have what well, vast uh lester uh, not the best but he's a bench forwarder. he's also a very good starting defender too but it's just there because he has one of the better fixtures uh the rest not so much um gusto chelsea now i've seen them in this season i'm not so convinced about their defensive records well at least they drew in the last preseason that they that they did uh yesterday so yeah. and then pedro poro it's been solid in preseason. midfield i have midday of course um Jota, like you talked about bailey aston villa fixtures are not so not so bad i think he will do well uh he, if he stays fit haven't really followed their preseason, so i think he should be good to go and oscar pop i really admire this guy uh, i think he's going to have a breakout season the only problem is uh, um bruno silva is it bruno silva silva is a problem because silva plays in that right <laughs> and bernardo yeah bernardo yeah this is good. Uh -huh. i hope he gets his his his, his, his chance yeah um, i think they say, you would expect him to start the first game at least uh, the first game at least I think yeah the first two games maybe mm -hmm. It will be difficult, but yeah, but I'm sure everybody wants him because of the Ipswich game, Ipswich, especially yeah. the Ipswich game. Mm -hmm. And then up top, I have Watkins. People are going for Isaac, so it's it's a toss up between him and Isaac in my mind. So you know, it might be mm -hmm. Isaac instead. But I have Watkins yeah, because yeah. You, uh, don't, you don't have you don't have what is yeah like Isaac. You have to have him. Isaac, you have. It's to just have because him, of right? preseason, man. I mean, what? No, no, it's not just like he has the best fixture for the four. If you are thinking short term. You have to have Isaac. Isaac. Is, I guess. I guess. The first, I guess I'll change. The first, yeah. the first three fixtures for Newcastle are, are um, uh, Southampton at home, which is great. Mm. Then you have Bournemouth away, which is not bad, and then you have Tottenham at home. So it's good fixtures. Home Isaac is one of the best players when it comes to yeah, home fixtures. Home, yeah. Last season. Yeah. So if he has two two decent home fixtures, Tottenham they are not good defensively. We all know that they can score, they can attack, but defensively they are not that solid. So yeah, I would like like Isaac over Watkins for me. But anyways, go ahead. Let me just. I guess not, that's a, that's a good shot because I was I was a bit you know like debating the two. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a bit of preference. But if you look at it objectively, I guess Isaac is a better pick than Haaland, of course. And then Solanke. Uh, it's the price point for Solanke that's why he's in this team. I could have just gone with two and they get an extra midfield uh, who's like you know really good. But then and Solanke is a top. Like he's really so, 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 I mean, him in that sports team, you know, yeah, because people yeah. are looking at it's, getting a uh, 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 son, but then now that Solanke is there, he's going to be the striker. I don't know. Yeah, you know, he's priced from the his last season, but of course, he's mm -hmm. also priced as a bright as a brand force, uh, mm -hmm. as a board mode player. So his price went up, but it did not go significantly up, even though he has a very good season. So at sports, he has better chances. He has more, you know, better, better players around him. Yeah, yep. So yes, maybe he will lose the penalty yeah, shots, yeah. the penalties. But last year he missed the penalty that he took, right? Uh, when we all captain him. So, <laughs> so it's okay if he don't get the penalties. But yeah, for seven point five million for a sports striker, mm -hmm. who is gonna, who is likely to be the first choice, like every single game. I think it's a, it's a very good pick. Like they have not changed him to sports yet in the game. I don't know why. Still born more. Yeah, so, they're slacking. Maybe they're waiting for the for the here we go. Is it? Is that like? Has it's, it, it's already done. Since 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 Saturday, he was it was announced that he went to. School. He held the he held the jersey and everything. Yeah, yeah he got the jersey, everything. I, they I, are just I slow. They are not working, man. The FPL towers. They are not working. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in bench, I have uh, Iverson, uh, Palmer because of man city but he Palmer might play because regardless of who the opposition is he can definitely do a job for you man so yeah. i guess I, i'm just not, not sure that because he hasn't been playing in their preseason so i don't know whether he's going to start or not that's my my only issue i have nuri and then martin so, so that's my team mm -hmm. yeah it might change oh, but this it. is the draft right now 
Yeah, I might change a few defenders here, there, and then maybe Watkins for Isaac. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much not many changes at this point for me. <clears throat> uh, how about, it's how about yourself? It's a solid team. Okay, let me go to my team. Um, let me take this out. Uh, okay. That's my team there. You have, uh, in goal, I went with Flecken. Um, he has been very popular in FPL this season. Those people are thinking too short term, and uh, I think the fixtures are good for them. Crystal Palace not, is good, but um, not maybe great, because Crystal Palace can attack too. Um, but of course, it's not Man City, Manchester United. Crystal Palace is a good home fixture, I would say. And then you have in defense, I went with Pedro Poro. I think we have that one similar. Uh, Lewis Hall, uh, I was talking about him. I would expect him to start um, from what I've been hearing and reading. Uh, Trent is back in my team yesterday. He came in sharp, created a goal for Jota. And, you know, the bias in me will always keep him. And he, he went one, one, one million down this season. I, think, I still think he's the uh, most creative one of the most creative players in the Premier League, not just Definitely. defenders, one of the most creative players in the Premier League. If Liverpool can defend well, Trent is going to get some assists, definitely. Um, uh, in midfield, I went with... Uh, uh, Jota was not in my team, but after yesterday, I, I, I brought in Jota. After yesterday, I brought in Jota. I, I had Elanga, uh, Elanga, Nottingham Falls. They also have a very good start to the season, but I would rather have the players in the good teams. Um, and yeah, I went with Jota. I think he will start the season as the Liverpool first choice number nine. He will not play 90 minutes. I don't think so. He will play around 60, 70 minutes. But because Jota just needs uh, a few minutes to, to score. He usually come off the bench and then score. Oscar Bob, I'm very impressed with him so far in the preseason. I, I think Manchester City, he will start. So I have him like, like you. Um, Buemo, he's not getting a lot of attention this season in FPL. Um, but like we forget what how good he was last season when mm -hmm. he was fit like and then they have a decent start to the season they play crystal palace like i say so well i'm gonna go yeah yeah i, I think I, I his ownership i don't think is, is is that huge let me see oh it's still six you're six percent yeah that's that's very he's still he's still a, a different yeah he's still a differential so imagine um uh uh he i can see him starting the season well he has been doing very well in preseason scoring goals yeah. uh tony has just come back but you know he works well with and without tony so it does mm -hmm. not matter who he plays with he's usually a very good player um salah um salah is the pick that i should not have <laughs> because i don't see captaining him in the first two or three game weeks so i think i the first time i will captain salah this season is gonna be because the first game Ipswich is not gonna be him um it's, go it's not gonna be Ipswich Brentford I'm gonna captain Haaland he plays Ipswich at home my United away I will not captain Haaland so maybe not in half forest and born mode four and five those are the first weeks I will think about captaining Haaland in the game so Salah in the game so he's not a necessary pick for me in the first three game weeks so if I'm thinking short term he should not be there Mm -hmm. But again, there is a bias, so bias. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I pick bias. him and I see him as a very good FPL pick as well. But I think um, I should not. I'm even considering that. But I'm sure he will be in my team at the start of the season, just because of that bias will overtake me and I will have him. And Minde, like I say, that one maybe I have already spoken about him enough. Uh, okay. Haaland, and uh, yeah, uh, I don't want him for the first game. But I desperately need him for the second game. So for that, I will just do with him for the first game against Chelsea. And then, yeah, Isaac is up top for me. He's going to be my captain for the first game week. I think he has the best fixtures. Like I say, it's always about the premiums, the best fixtures. And then I think Sa Haaland, uh, Isaac has the best fixture in the party first game week. And, you know, it's, it's Isaac. And uh, so I expect him to do well in that one. So he's going to be my captain. On the bench, I have Fabianski. Uh, I don't really care about my second choice goalkeeper. I don't even really see any good one. Um, uh, four million at least. I don't see any good one. And then uh, Robinson. Um, he's also, yesterday I watched um uh literally uh, analyze him and fulham the fixtures they have in the first few game weeks you know we we are talking about the fixtures they they come out on top uh robinson looks like a very good prospect this season he was traveling up a lot he assisted actually one of the simitros goals and he's always bumping forward he's playing like a uh, like a winger like uh fulham they are playing like a loop-sided back four so one mm -hmm. will stay they form a back three yeah, and then the other one yeah. will travel okay. and the one who is going up all the time has been robinson according to what i hear and what, what i read so that's why i have him back like i tell you i've been very impressed with him and my budget striker is daka i know he's not he's, he's been really bad 
Yeah, he's been really bad for Leicester last season. They were like no Leicester fan will will tell you to pick Bitaka. But because I had five million to spend for my second to third choice striker and uh Daka is the is the is the is the decent cheapest. one there. So it's the, the cheapest, cheapest one. And you know, Leicester don't have a striker right now. Avadi is injured, he has not been playing preseason. Um Daka is the only one. Hinacho has left, so Daka is the only one yeah, there. So yeah. you, it's it's never a bad thing to have have that, those kind of players mm-hmm. there. So maybe he can even have a breakout. You know, he mm-hmm. he haven't done it yet for for Leicester, but he could have a breakout season this year after having experienced the Premier League one year, experiencing the the Championship one year. So maybe he can, you know, he can be a breakout in the Premier League. He has never um, really hit the hit the highs that people expected from him in the first place. So that's my thing. What's your take on it? I mean, that's interesting. The uh, whole I think you explained the whole one to me. Uh, that guy, um, yeah, I'm not I'm not with that <laughs> that pick. But then uh, I think if you remove Salah, you might improve this team, especially in the midfield. You can even upgrade your Mbomo to somebody else. And yeah, one of the like the top guys, like a Saka or you know some, somebody. Yeah. It depends. Uh, uh, well, yeah. if I if I downgrade Salah to to Saka or someone, then of course I can uh, upgrade Daka to maybe uh Cal- Daka, what is his name Solanke, and then imagine having Solanke, Isaac, and, and Haaland, and then having Saka in that midfield and Saka have a better fixture than Salah in the first game to be honest mm-hmm. uh he plays Wolves at home Salah, Salah plays um uh, uh, uh but the, the reason to other than the bias the reason to why I desperately want Salah is because of the rest he has this summer like he's one of the suckers the suckers of this world the fordings of this world like you say the Palmers of this world mm-hmm. they were all busy in the Euros yeah. and Salah has been not has been doing and Salah is the greatest FPL asset ever and he is still and like if you look at, he won the liverpool uh fitness test this summer like fitness wise he's still there and he cannot lose the football that is he already have experienced a lot you know so i think the football is still in him but of course Liverpool have a new manager and all all those th- things so it's, it might be different for him but mm-hmm. he's the greatest fpl asset despite the all players we are talking about here 200 fpl points every single season he plays so with that consistency is there for him and with the summer rest and all those kind of things and of course with the bias you know, I think he's going to do well. You know, so, <laughs> that's no, the thing. No, no question. Salah is, Salah is the best. But I guess my 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 impression is that he's going to be more of like a, how do I say, like a big brother to the team because he is like one of the most experienced, most reliable player in that team. So he's yeah. going to be like the major creator in the team. He's going to be, you know, he's going to be different from when Mane was there. He was the one that was finishing all the chances and, you know, he's going to be one that's going to get things working. You know okay things are working let me try and track the bull by the horns and make things work let other people score you know be the guy that's at the back and uh, assisting and providing uh, that's that's this role that i feel like is going to have this season but, might score but, but, F- uh-huh. but like, but like i say might, fpl is about goals assist and uh clean sheets right? might, if he gives you two assists or three assists in a game you, it's still the same as scoring two goals right he, he's going to be the one assisting the assister mostly that's what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> no, Salah, Salah will be involved with the goals. I think he will be scoring and assisting. Yeah. I think even the, the, the preseason, he has been you know very much involved. Yeah, he scored a very good goal against 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 Arsenal, was it? Against Arsenal, that counter attack or that that yeah, it was it was just a counter attack goal, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, uh, this has been a good part, man. I think we, I think our teams are going to change, but not much since we're already closing yeah. up to the deadline. So we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, with, with our new format. <laughs> new format, I think yeah, I enjoy this I mean, format more, right? It's, it's yeah, it's, it's very you know, you might be tempted to go long, but then it's good that we can, you know, just have a few pointers out there to keep us in the, in the, in the uh, right mm-hmm. direction. But yeah, pretty styling, man. Um, thanks guys for supporting the pod as usual. We are back. Hopefully, we want to keep on being consistent every week. You know, FPL is back, the, the FPL fever is, is, is slowly catching on, <laughs> so um also hope, go watch uh mm-hmm. go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, i was gonna say i hope Minty is gonna be on the term, thumbnail because you are on thumbnail oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> we are gonna have oh that means yeah you're gonna have me on the thumbnail hopefully we get in there more often than not oh <laughs> uh, yeah so please guys go check out uh Jolof Bantaba, uh on youtube of course uh then see we have a lot of content there about Minty. chama has done like his due diligence put some deep dive there also interviews you know there's, there's a lot of content there so please check out that for more gambian content as well 
Uh, guys, um, so good luck on FPL game week one, as usual. Uh, it's, hopefully, it's going to be a fun season. So we we'll catch you guys on the next one. Goodbye. Bye, guys. <laughs>